do this as the rain starts. What you don't want is to do it before the rain starts. Because if you do it before the rain starts, you won't get wet while you're doing it. We have decided to move camps. This will be our third campsite. The reason we're moving this camp is that this enormous camel thorn tree here uh, seems to gather water like a sponge. And although it sounds like it's raining, it's not. This is all water coming out of the tree. When camping, it's always nice to stay at a place that has some nice ablutionary facilities. Now, we are here on night three at our camp at Zavuti, and I can tell you that these are some of the best ablutions in all of Botswana. Powerful elephant proof vent. A beautiful message written in stone. What does it say? Oh, yes. Welcome, Savuti Camping. Welcome, Savuti Camping. Welcome to Savuti Camping. There's a picture of Kirsten in 45 years' time on camp. Because there is no one else here, I am also going to go to the ladies. Hello. Three beautiful showers, three clean loos. Full loom paper, soap for the hands, what more could anyone want? Shakal, shakal, why don't you call? Shakal, shakal, your call fills me with joy. Shakal, shakal, why don't you call? Shakal, shakal, your call fills me with joy. Please don't harass the little wildebeest that is lying in the grass. He has got no friends and his mummy and daddy are nowhere to be seen. I feel stressed for that little bit. I know, I prefer not to look at them. Them? Well, lone wildebeest like that because they make me sad. He's too little to be by himself. The Carmino bee eaters are most impressive. Ah, thunder rumbling. This is a stretch point, you can get on the stretch here.
What are you enjoying drinking there? I am having a delicious sparkling soda water. It tastes exactly like water with a little bit of fizz. The reason I'm drinking sparkling soda water is that gin is no longer procurable in Botswana. This is because apparently, much like in my own country of South Africa, no one can control themselves. And so during a pandemic, no one can be allowed to drink. Barely light. It's, it's barely light, but we can hear lions calling in front of the camp. And so my wife has huffled, hustled me, huffled. I can't even speak. It's so early. Hustled me out of camp in the semi-dawn, and we're hopefully going to see our first Savuti lion. I think he's up here. He was up here. finally found our Savuti lion who was shouting in front of our camp from I think about 2 a.m. and we found him in these glorious clearings across here and when we found him there was a lone wildebeest also in attendance and we were very worried about the baby wildebeest that we saw here on his own yesterday evening and uh, well as the lion was shouting his last so the baby wildebeest caught up with the lone adult wildebeest and the two of them absconded at a great wildebeest pace. Do you think that the male wildebeest the baby found? I think it is a bull wildebeest that the baby found, yes. But would the bull be accepting of a baby? Well, he didn't seem that charmed, but I mean, they'll make a little hurt. Mm. I don't think they'd be that offended by each other. We've just had a very long, fascinating chat with Isaac, who's a guide from Deserts and Delta. And apart from the fact that he says that life's really tough in tourism here in Botswana, not so very surprising, he gave us some fascinating information about this lion. This lion's name is Tsikedi, and Tsikedi is part of a coalition of three that dominates the northern reaches here of Savuti. Tsikedi is currently in a coma. His belly is full, and so it's probably a meat coma. At least we got him walking and doing one little roar. But I think we'll probably leave him now and see what else we can find. Mm -hmm. 
back to check on our mail line from this morning and as we were about to get there Kirsten said there's a lion and there is a lion but she's not very happy because this lion is a youngster and he's on his own much like the young impala we've seen on their own and the young wildebeest that we've seen on its own which is by itself again and it's by itself again and it's coming this way mm. and the Big male is under that bush. Looking at the wildebeest. There's the lone Vildi all on his own. Unaware that there are lions all over the place. Over there is a Cory Bustard in the middle of his display. Now, unfortunately, he is very far away, and so his display might not be as bizarre as it could be closer up. But basically what he's done is fluffed out his throat so it looks like he's swallowed an enormous pumpkin maybe or butternut. He looks like his neck looks like a swollen cotton candy ball and he's also doing his very unmelodic call which goes something like this. Um, um. Now, I find this quite interesting because, well, uh, for a number of reasons, but there is a female Cory Bustard, and she's off to the left of where this chap is. She is facing in the opposite direction, has clearly got no interest whatsoever in this chap, and there he stands, the world's heaviest flying bird, and he looks like he's swallowed a puffer fish. Here is an impala sleeping like a dog. We've come back to have a quick look for our lion. He is fast asleep, dead as lions normally are at quarter to twelve on a relatively hot afternoon. There's no sign of our baby wildebeest. There were a whole lot of marabou storks over in the middle of this clearing. We thought maybe they were eating his carcass, but I think they're after bullfrogs, of which there are many around this inundated flay. And then our baby lion cub, who was all on his own this morning, also appears to have disappeared. Appears to have disappeared. Uh, we don't know to where he has gone. And there is some impala lying very restfully where we found him this morning. So. That's all very interesting. We're now going to leave Savuti and head for the Chobe Riverfront Camp Ihaha. Are you ready? I'm ready. On we go.